understanding that we you've been beat up, beat down, but we all have. That doesn't stop you from being a good man, being a good person, being but you can't just say it. Like it said, be that man. That means I'm not there yet. Like the, the work is not done yet, but I wanna be that man. So it's to me it's like uh realizing, okay, I'm I'm not as good as I thought I was or or I don't want to overcomplicate my thoughts behind it, but like I'm not there yet. What's your but own motivation? I mean, right, it's your self motivation to who you look at yourself in the mirror. Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean that, and that's awesome. Yeah, I just you know? to me uh, going through the process of writing this was me trying to be a better person overall, but within relationships to to be that man that whoever the person may be that wants you to be yeah. you know and being able to look in a mirror and say I'm that man rather than I want to be that man yeah. which is constant work to me I mean when so, I look in the mirror I get mad at myself because my sink's a little dirty <laughs> I, I look and say you again dude <laughs> I'm like man I need to clean the sink again <laughs> you know I mean that's why I don't have too many mirrors because I'll, yeah, I'll start cleaning remove them all <laughs> But no, I mean, you know, it's self-motivation. It really is for me. And and there's something to be said about saying things out loud that make you realize something. You know, right. when it, and I've had I've had several people tell me that that's their favorite song in the album, which I wouldn't I wouldn't have thought would be anybody's because the other ones can be a little more poppy. But the storyline, they like the storyline. And they can relate to the fact that, yeah, it doesn't matter who you are, what you're doing, or if it's in a relationship or not, that I want to be baby steps. If I can be 1% better than more, you know, I can be closer to being that man. And I, you know, like we all have been in relationships where we, uh, we not only failed the other person, but we failed ourselves. So if we stop there, then here we are. That's where we're going to stay forever. Yeah, I mean, so, you know, somebody told me one time, you know, how do you consistently keep moving? How do you keep moving? Well, did you wake up this morning? And they go, yeah, okay. What did What did you do this morning? Okay. I, the way I look at it is, that, you know, if you're going to keep moving, like the whole purpose of keep moving, I think people can complicate it too much. And yes. basically they say, you know, I woke up this morning. You were forced to move if you could. A lot of people aren't don't, aren't even able to do that, yeah. you know. So literally, you just look at the small part of you woke up and then consistently go, okay, what do I need to accomplish now that I woke up? You know, I had this really uh, interesting conversation with someone a while back, and I said, you know what? If we can all wake up, and I I may have heard this somewhere, I don't know, but if we can all wake up and all day long. Uh, find our our Waldo. Where's Waldo? And meaning that one thing, that one shining thing in a, in a vast array of terrible things, then we've accomplished something for that day. We found our right. Waldo for the day. So, and I don't always do that. Trust me, I don't. But I mean, that's what we strive to be. You know, right. be that man, be a better man. Why? Well, it, it's funny that two of my favorite songs of all time are. Or Better Man by Pearl Jam and Better Man by Clint Black. And maybe that's kind of some motivation on that, you know? Well, Michael Wan's got a song called Better on his CD. Oh, yeah? We might have to see if he wants to put Better Man. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. But, no, um, I mean, I'm going to go into the track, man. Awesome. Um, Great. I want to he hear Rebecca sing, She's too. Incredible. I want to hear it. So here we go with Better. Wait. Here we go with Be That Man by Ray Wood. Thank you. Know. Ray, Ray's going to be that man. Ray, you, you made me almost want to go get a girlfriend. After that song. <laughs> well, hold up now. <laughs> Don't get ahead of yourself. <laughs> <laughs> No, I mean, I'm not against, you know, I, I, they just don't like me working too much sometimes. Yeah. I'm like, okay, you don't want me working? Cool. <laughs> I'm going back to work. <laughs> And then uh, when when they find one who doesn't work, they're like, "Why don't you work?" <laughs> you, you know what? You're, yeah. you're kind of funny, you know. Like, There's you know, and then I could be you. that man. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah, you know, like, <laughs> you know, just just ask me to take, you know, 
an hour off. We go to grab a bite to eat. Nice Take burger. Minutes. Get a burger. <laughs> <laughs> Be that man and go give me a burger. Go give me a burger. <laughs> I will gladly go get you a burger. I think that'd probably be the sexiest thing a female would ever tell me. Hey, give me a burger, Kevin. Are you serious? I will gladly go get you a burger. I'm gonna write a song called "I Will Get You a Burger." I'll buy you, I'll buy you a burger, baby. <laughs> you like burgers, right? Right now, they sound interesting. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Every time we get into an interview, I talk about burgers somehow. It's kind of funny. Oh, really? Yeah. Favorite burger in town. While they're listening, you know, they'll, they'll go, oh, man, this dude did not just start talking about burgers. It, it, all we're doing is saving, is helping the beef economy in Acadiana because they talk about seafood way too much. And you talk to everybody in Lafayette, everybody has a different right. favorite burger. Because there are some good burgers around this town. Which one of your favorites? <sighs> See how we went there? Lately, I really like uh, Dick's. Daiquiri's, by the way. Dick's Daiquiri's. Dick's Daiquiri's. Yeah, yeah nah, I don't <laughs> actually like Dick's. <laughs> I had to go. Legends has a great burger. More months. Which nice. Legends? There are there are now seven. You so know, we need to clarify one, which one has the good burger. The the one downtown, the Annex. Okay, that's, I agree with you on that. That's the last place I've eaten a burger. And the, the cook down there, too. Look, I mean, cool dude. Cool dude. I've, I've met him. I've taken a picture with him. On, on, with a burger? With a burger, actually. <laughs> I have. But, yeah, bur- I mean. Your burger buddy? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've had one on Johnson Street, and I've had one. I've had one everywhere. But, you know, I, I don't really. I don't know. I don't, I'm not big into the pineapple deal. Yeah, yeah. I want give a burger, me, me, dude. Just natural. Yeah. Like I, I would really be happy with just a patty, because then I know what I'm working with, and then we can kind of build around it. Like, yeah, you know, you know, construction. Start with a good foundation, <laughs> and then bring in the bun. They really need a place where you build your own, or something like that. Something. But, Why are we talking about burgers, Kevin? <laughs> break it up a little bit. There we go. All get right. you hungry. Get you gonna, crazy. If we move on to fries, I may be really happy. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Tell me this. Hat. You said you used to sing with Miss Beard. Yeah. You know, in casinos. Mm -hmm. Okay. How long have you been singing? Twenty. Well, wait a minute. (laughs) Wow. Uh, Thirty years. Thirty. Thirty years. Thirty years. So. In 30 years, how many songs would you say that you've written? I've thrown away about 200,000. Wow. If I get to the end, it means I want to do something with it. Like, I rarely finish a song completely and then throw it away. Okay. Normally, if I get through the, the, the middle of it, and although it may be a little catchy or it may have some meaning and it just bogs down and to me that's that's um learning for the next song almost everything i've done i put somewhere put on an album or right. used in a live show those i would probably say quality 200 you know i would say okay in the archive somewhere okay. yeah. and i mean you know, you've you, you, thirty year experience. You know, you have a lot of a lot of different experiences. In, in but I mean, a lot of that was spent doing the covers. You know, just right. to you know, it's really hard to sustain yourself doing originals, writing, yeah. recording. That you ultimately have to do covers. Talk talk about that because I see it online mm-hmm. all the time. You know, mm-hmm. yeah, the Times Best of. You know, mm-hmm. you know, tell all your fans to follow you. Go, go vote. And, you know, some people. I, I guess they. It's a heated argument with some of them. You know that. You know, I mean, your fans ultimately have to do what, what you ask them to do. Yeah. Um, you know, and and you ultimately ha- they ultimately have to love you for more than one reason. You know. I think the the beginning should be sincerity. Right. Your passion for what you do, right? Uh, your ability, yeah, 
And whether or not you're singing something that you wrote that is that means something to you, or they're singing, you're singing something equally as passionate that someone else wrote. There shouldn't be this debate about selling out and going doing covers. You know why? Because I feel like I'm singing a great song, right? Well, as well as I can sing it, and that that's that's yeah, pretty but, awesome. But Ray, you, you're on both sides of the spectrum. I mean, you have just as many originals that you've written. And you do covers as well, right? Because I mean, you know you understand the process of, of, of working. And, and well, I, love, number two, I love to sing. Yeah. I mean, I want to sing. Right. If you, they say, "Hey, you want to go here?" Yeah. Or you want to sing? I'm like, I'm go, I want to go sing. But you're also for the people too. I mean, they, they yeah. come up and request. You don't look at them like you want to kill them. I mean, you yeah. see that in different places. You know, like you want to request what? You know, like I, it, it's strange. I, right? I but stopped. you know a lot of music as well. I've done it a few times in my life. Where I was like, oh, not that again. But then I also realized that, you know what? When if I'm if I'm playing a little hole in the wall bar, doesn't matter where it's at. Twenty people walk in and they had just a terrible day, and nothing's going right for any of them. Mm -hmm. And they ask for Brown Eyed Girl, which mm -hmm. I played twenty thousand times, and every musician hates playing it. But if Brown Eyed Girl makes their night, puts them in a better mood. Then I'm gonna play Brown Eyed Girl, and they're gonna come back and see right. And exactly, it's opening doors for yeah. anything. But I mean, I don't think it should be. Well, you know what it is. Like, yeah, I, you're not painting your face and dressed up like Kiss. You know, yeah. So, I mean, that's what I'm saying. Like, but you, you know, have, we could too. <laughs> like, this is what I'm saying. You know, like I'm gonna give you an example. You could play five covers, and come into a song like uh, Louisiana Rain. Or you have another song that we're about to play, Dirty Ways. I don't know anybody on this planet that can't relate to this track. <laughs> okay? I don't. I mean, somebody anywhere. I mean, you know, you even have little kindergartners. Somebody might do them wrong. They might steal your play up. Yes. Very relatable. Somebody's going to be able to relate to this this track. I mean, in, in, in a lot of the tracks on this album are relatable. Yeah. And I think... You understand that very well, and that's why you, you know, you have the album you have right now. I'm, I'm really proud of it. Really proud of it. And you know that there were going to be some covers on there, but like in the studio, we wrote a couple, so the covers went. And if you listen to me sing a cover song, and you listen to me sing one of my songs, it's completely different. But the passion for singing is not different. No, like it I should agree be with you, equal, like. I can tell that you're more passionate. For yeah, sure I'm more about connected. Your I mean, yeah, this is an original, but in the same regard. You're good. You're good. Really. One of the one of the pictures are falling in the, in, the, in the office, and Ray's like, "Oh my God, I don't like that. Just leave it." <laughs> There's pictures everywhere in my yeah. life. They're all over the place. I, I, if they break, they break. I, 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 don't, I don't worry about it anymore. So the the thunder rolled, yeah, and then all of a sudden the the picture fell. <laughs> so, is that a sign? No, it, you know, it's one of those things. But seriously, I mean, this is a great album. Dude. Yeah. I, I've said it like six times already, but, you know, you've got a lot of different people on here, too, you know, that people I've heard of, too. I mean, you're on guitar, you have Justin Lewis and Tim Ware. Uh, you know, and you, you, it's it's interesting, man. Like you know, there's so many different musicians in Acadiana, and you're having, to, you know, what I'm saying. Like like, th to me, this this easily should be paid, played on any station that I I've, I've ever, you know, t in my opinion. I might buy you a burger for that one. Well. I agree, though, and it, I mean, it's, it's difficult. Yeah. It's a difficult road to it, get in it, and, 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 and the reason I'm saying this is because of this. To, to, when I was listening to some of these tracks today, I was thinking about, you know, I've got, I've got seven CDs sitting on my desk. I know all of them. I know all of these people equally. You know, they, they're all here, and they're all doing one thing that nobody seems to get. And they're they're really giving you a reason to want to listen to something, you know. The, it, I just look at it th at the process. I guess I, I don't mean to ramble, but like literally, you know, I look at the process of which I'll deal with, 
you go to shows, you set up five dollar cover, play for three hours the entire time you're playing. You're not even thinking about it because it's what you're about to do. We talked about this more than once in here. Second process is you save all these five dollars to make an album. The studio engineer gets paid a lot of five dollars, okay? And then you turn around and you make the album. And you may make a little bit of profit. And and you go from there, you know, but clearly nobody's doing this because they do not love it. You know, I, I got blessed and, and I wouldn't have done it if a friend of mine, uh, Michelle Eccles, who actually backed me in this process and believed in me when really I didn't even believe myself right. and put up a lot of money to do it. The struggles uh, become even more real when it's somebody else that's believing in you. So for me, it's it's been a, it's been a fight to try to find avenues for it, which to me it's it's hard to accept too. Because whenever you're that artist that's so perfectionist, you can't believe somebody would just drop their own funds for you to do that. Because it's happened for me too, and I'm I, you know I'm I'm appreciative as you can, right. but it's and like so hard. Because, you know, all my life, I've had to work for everything I wanted to do. I've had to build everything. And when I get bored, I start building something new. So, you know, I, I know what you're saying. It's very difficult. It's so hard for me. When somebody goes, hey, I like this, it's hard for me sometimes to even say thank you because I'm so shocked that they said it. it. So, I get you. Being humble is how it should be. I, I, I consider myself to be extremely humble. Right. But at some point, I guess we got to stop being so humble and, and taking you have taking the help because yeah. you know what that's um, that music doesn't get heard by anybody if she doesn't take that leap so it's not just me who did it right and Tim Ware who wrote a lot of the songs with me and was instrumental in getting me motivated to do it uh, though without those two like it doesn't happen right. because I couldn't save enough five dollars you know you and when somebody goes to hear this live music locally, you should never complain about the $5 you're paying. Because it, you get to hear some of the greatest music in the world, like, around every corner. And just here in Lafayette. Yeah. You know, so $5, kind of small price to pay for that. Yeah, I mean, you know, you know and I, I, I'm saying this because, you know, while I'm listening to this, I'm thinking about these artists. You know, I'm thinking about everybody. I'm thinking about, you know, you, you've got country artists on my desk. You've got indie artists on my desk. You've got a CD that hasn't been heard in over 10 years on the, on my desk, wrapped in plastic, brand new, okay? I've got, you know, new albums, old albums, stuff, just everything. And I'm going through all this stuff. And the reason I'm going through all this stuff is because I'm about to have a show. And it's strictly going to play local music. That's great. And, 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 and I'm going to give, I'm going to have artists come in and we're going to talk about the different artists because I, I feel like the more creative that we could possibly be here, the better it's going to be. And I think that that's the only way you're going to change us or the people around us because literally they want to hear it. People are starving for something to do here in just about everywhere on the planet. You know, I've, I've heard it several times where people are like, I don't know where to find this, or I don't know where to find original music, yeah. or it's here, man. It's still not I, hard it, to We find. have to I mean, find avenues. To, yeah. It's getting easier, yeah. thanks to people like you who are going out there and pushing these things. But when, when people come from out of town who don't know the little things right. and want to hear that, I think the we should make it more available. I, I think you're right about that, and I have an idea for that as well. You know, that's yeah. Uh, there's an idea that I'm I'm, I'm working on behind, behind the scenes, and it, and it it stems on that. The only thing I was trying to figure out, it, it, you know, I don't like charging for anything. I don't. Uh, then people tell me I'm crazy because it took me like, you know, a year to build it. But literally, I mean, I want to build a place like that. Yeah, I, I think that's next. Um, and I don't think it'll take me a very long time. It's just really the time to put it up. But uh, where you can search multi-genre and, and find the links to the musicians because there's really nothing like that. Really um, it, it's just man hours.
for me. Yeah. You know, like we're really, I mean, it is, it, 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 but I feel like every single person that comes to this show or they're interviewed, I feel like that's the way I need to do it. Like they, they come on the show, they have their music, put it on. Well, and you know, all these, some of my favorite shows were the, the, the storytellers or right live from Daryl's house. Where yeah, you, yeah. Where you get to the inside yeah. of the artist or, you know, you, cause your perception of what they are, but just their song. It's not always right. You know what I mean? You don't understand that, that man, there was so much more behind that. Yeah. You know, like, uh Dude, Dar I mean, but look look at something so simple, right? You're in the back of Daryl's house. That is incredible. All these <laughs> artists come out and they collaborate, they start playing. My favorite episode is the Chromio one. I don't know if no, you know I, I don't think I've that. but dude, that one is amazing. Like Daryl Hall's amazing. Yeah. 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 I don't know where the hell John Oates is lately, yeah, but I, I mean, I, Dar Daryl Halls, he could do anything. He can go play I think anywhere. the concept for it, and it's kind of like it's grassroots. It right. feels grassroots, like they're sitting there cooking in the kitchen, and then they talk about a song, and they talk about their influences, or, right. you know, and the more we feed each other's flames, the bigger this fire can get. Yeah. You know? No, I agree. I, I agree. I mean, I... I look at Daryl Hall's, you know, behind the, behind the house, you know, you, you take four guys from here, they can go behind a barn and do it, you know? You really could. You could. I mean, it, it, I, anything can be done in just about anywhere in the world. You just have to do it, you know? Like, we started doing interviews without even having a show name. And they <laughs> like, hey, you might need to have a show name. And I felt like, no, I don't. We're just going to go online just and talk. Do what we do. Make it do what it do. So, but it works, you know? As long as it happens... It takes a little bit of time, but you know what? If, if you don't feel, if you don't have a passion to help people, you probably are not going to have the motivation to, to do anything because I, I feel like helping people is a huge flame within itself. Sometimes that overrides everything else for me. Yeah. Like, I feel like uh, there's a song on here. I, I don't know if you're going to play the track, but I've had that at... Uh, Repeatedly, I used to play. I used to play it almost every night, even on my cover shows. And uh, man, I would get the most amazing response. And I would have emails six months later telling me how I listened to it at least once a week because it just helps. Yeah, you know. And that's yeah. what music does. That's the beauty of music is that wow, every single day we're changing people's lives. Well. Not only that, I mean, Ray, Ray the, you know, the, the output that you're putting, when I say output, I, I, I actually listen to frequencies all the time. Mm -hmm. So, like, literally, when I hear the frequency of what your album is putting out, it's a, it's a bunch of different tracks and sounds, but it's all one style of frequency output. Yeah. And, you know, whenever people listen to that and they feel like they can be a part of it, their lives actually improve because they don't think about what they were thinking about before they started listening. They're able to release, and they're actually, you know, they're able to become better humans. I guess you could say. Oh, uh, but but you know, I the think, frequencies no, I think have that's a healing. A good way to, put it. to me, to me, you know, why do we listen to music at all? You know, it makes me feel better about myself. We'll get all the reasons why. I mean, you can Google why do people listen to music. There's a thousand different reasons. Whatever frequency that you're accustomed to listening to, that's what you're accustomed to listen to. But when you change your frequency, like someone asked me that the other day, they were like, man, I'm just having a bad week. What kind of music were you listening to last week? Man, that affects my day <laughs> tremendously. I almost, like in the morning, scared to, to turn on the radio until I figure out where I'm at on that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. if I figure out, you know, what kind of mood I'm in, and then I play into that. If it's a good mood, I try to play into that with the music I listen to or the things I may watch on TV or, or anything like that. And so you're right. You're absolutely right. If you play into the positive, it's only going to get bigger. It's true. I mean, if you, you know, play into the negative, it's only going to get bigger. I, I, I mean, to me, it makes complete sense. I mean, you know, if you look at a habit, a habit is formed in 21 days. What were you listening to 21 days prior? You know, if your 21 day cycle sucked, you might want to stop listening to that. <laughs> that ain't yeah. working for you before. Yeah, because it's true. I mean, once you become addicted to a frequency, you are addicted to a frequency. It, you know? it, it becomes your go-to. Like, if we're talking in music sense, it becomes your go-to music. Right. Like, I have a go-to music when I'm sad, which is, tends to be sad music. 
because the way I think is like, yeah, I'm going through that. I'm not the only one and I don't want to be there again. So it, it's in a weird way, it's a positive for me because right. if, if I'm now I'm, I'm in my own space and I'm realizing where I'm at. Now I need to rise above that. So I go to, I don't necessarily go to, you know, Justin Bieber or something all happy right. and I don't do that. You see, I don't think Justin Bieber's happy at all. Right. So <laughs> his music can never make you happy. I mean, the but, last picture I saw of Justin Bieber story was strangling him at a concert. So, <laughs> I mean, did he work? I don't know. But literally, you know, I'm saying, you know, what, like, I'm going to give you an example. What, what are you listening to right now? Like, is it you? Is it, is it, you know, are you critiquing yourself? Are you listening to somebody else? Are you, I mean, who do you like locally? Locally or worldly, I don't care because I like Peter Gabriel. That's where oh, I love Peter Gabriel. Right now, I listen to a lot of Amos Sleeks. I really like him. I, I like Jason Mraz, but I'm, I'm a huge fan. I go back and listen to. I'm a huge fan of Elvis Costello. I Otis Redden taught me how to sing by singing along. Elvis Costello's a cool dude, man. Who? Just in general, Elvis Costello is a cool cat. Yeah, and, and, and you do anything. You know, people, I've, I remember hearing that when I was younger, and I didn't get it. And then I heard about, you know, I remember when Julia Roberts and Wild Love It thing, and I everybody was like, what the hell, is, what is this about? You know, clearly, she, 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 there was something else going on with right. I Love It, you know? So, literally, I mean, you know, and then I started to kind of listen to a little bit of Elvis Costello, and I started listening to his music a little more, and then I got it. You know, but he's got a style about himself, too. But he's also always, you said frequency. Right. His frequency, regardless of style, a genre of music he's playing, it's running right through it. You know that's you, not just the voice, the phrasing, everything about it is him. In everything right. he does, when he he did some stuff with Burt Bacharach, yeah, that's still Elvis Burt Costello. Bacharach is the shit. I mean, but that was still <laughs> Elvis Costello who right. was playing punk. You know, right. the thing with Loud Love It, like you were saying, like um, when everybody was saying that about him, I was already listening to Loud Love It. I right. thought he was. I love Loud Love It, dude. I think he's but he's smooth too, creative. You know, just great he songwriter. Kind of, he, he kind of reminds me of. I, you, people are gonna probably want to shoot me for this, but the, uh, Byrne from uh, David Byrne from the Talking Heads. Oh Hands, yeah, he's right. like a he's like a country spinoff of David Byrne or something. My thinking is this: like you know, when the people who were saying why why is she with him, my question was why wouldn't she be with him? That's what I'm you trying know to what say. I mean? Like, 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 like there's dude. more to people than just what you see yes. and what you're forced to hear as a frequency. Mm -hmm. You hear more than their voice. You, you, you like went all up in exactly where I was going with that shit. But like, seriously, you know, you look at all the craziness on Facebook and all that, you know, all this stuff, people sharing this, sharing that, sharing this, sharing that. I see it every day. So I'm looking at this and I'm like, what are they listening to? That's what I'm thinking in the back of my mind. What are these people listening to? You know? Because to me, when I see articles online about why Louisiana is so amazing and why we're so happy, the happiest people in the world and all the stuff that I see and read. I hope that they weren't paid to say that because when I, the reason I live here is because we really do have that experience here. We have the opportunity for that experience. Now, yes. like for instance, all the happiness you can put on your plate is right here. But also, you can scrape that plate clean and throw it away. That's your choice. All the, the negativity that happens on Facebook, if that's somebody who's emptying their plate. That's your bad. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm choosing to load it on the plate. But, but this is what I'm saying. They're putting out a negative frequency. Disconnect, man. You got to disconnect. So, you know, I brought this up one day. It's true. Like, what frequency you put out as a musician as a songwriter, what we're talking about right now, we almost have to, it's almost like we have to almost be careful quite a bit because if we're not putting out something that's motivating somebody to think differently, then we're always going to think the same way, you know, to open your mind. And to me, that's what life is.
you need to be as open-minded as possible to learn as much as possible. That's all I do. Open to new ideas. Yeah. yeah. And I'm a, and that's coming from a creature of habit. I'm right. a creature of habit. I, but my mind is open enough to know that when something comes along, that I can I can accept it, use it, and maybe change my beliefs. But until that happens, then I kind of do what I do and right. mosey along. But whenever you have these conversations that can can actually change your thinking or make you see something just from a a 10% change in view. It can change your whole world. Right. But we have to be open to that. I'm going to give you an example. Louisiana rain. Hmm. Okay. We just had a huge rain storm. I mean, somebody actually texted me a while ago. They said, man, we're listening to y'all. And we got this emergency broadcast. And it cut me completely off. So how how do I get back? And I said, well, just turn your phone off. Turn it back on. You know, like, but literally, I mean, Look what that frequency, that, I mean, it's completely changed the everything, you know? So, it's it's that simple. It really is that simple, you know? Like, uh, but no, Louisiana you know, it's rain. So, it's what, sort of like... Look, Louisiana rain, okay? When you, everybody has been in the rain, whether you like it or not. So, the only thing scary about Louisiana rain is driving in the Louisiana street. Yeah, <laughs> so, I'm to me. not driving here. <laughs> but, you know, literally... Uh, when a person hears it from your album's perspective, it might make them calm down just a little bit to be on a frequency of where you saw it. Right. I'm bringing all that up because I seriously think about this all the time. I, I write about this all the time. Your album has a tendency to, to has a possibility to change a person's frequency if they listen to it on a regular basis. I, hope so. I, I know so. I know I, so. I've... Uh... I've gotten feedback like that. Uh, I hope it does, dude. I mean, it really, it changed my frequency. Yeah. Writing these songs and letting some of the thoughts out changed my frequency to where, you know, priorities shift a little bit. Like, you know, it's right. And it may be faith, it may be whatever, whatever's your thing. It's. But you're, you know, you're also helped people on this album too. So, you know, um, you know, you, you have uh, Amy Lynn on background vocals, you have Rebecca Fisher Beard on that, and you have Taylor Barrett on this. You know, I mean, you're, you're Taylor, out, another great artist. Right. You're helping people too, you know, by putting them on an album. I don't know. I, I know Taylor, Taylor had, a, had a single. She, I think she has an album. You know, but it's also helping her to work with somebody who's been doing this for 30 years. I think years if we keep well. feeding each other's fire. Right, we can burn this place down. <laughs> I mean, but you're practicing literally. what you're preaching, is what I'm saying. And, and, yeah. and, and, and you know that that's not something that happens every day. It doesn't happen quite a bit. Well, you, know? you, you clearly are making this album because you want to make it. You, you, it's not about the money. Mm-hmm. It's about Ray's inner thoughts, and he's motivating himself in his own life. Right. And the, the only, uh, the only thing I, I want to gain from it is I definitely could care less about money or fame other than you know paying back the responsibilities of the people who made it possible is to reach as many people and maybe pay for me to do another or right or or avenues to where those songs can move on if if it's not me as the singer someone else recorded those two let it become its own person Right. You know what I mean? That's why every song on this album is so different. I feel like they're a dysfunctional family because if they're all these different songs eating at the same table, it would be chaos. Well, we're about to go into Dirty Ways. Because I'm going to tell you, dude, this is this is an awesome track. Thank you. It this really this was Tim, Tim Ware's baby. I wrote the lyrics and the melody, mm-hmm. and he he's just a great writer. Man. Okay, well... I mean, Tim Tim Ware, you need. I'm telling you right now, you, you guys did a good job on this track, man. Thanks, really. And I think anyone who hears it will feel the same way. Um, we're gonna go right into Dirty Ways. Is, is there anything you you can say about it? Oh, it's it's gonna explain itself. Oh, okay, I'll do that. Here's Ray Wood with Dirty Ways. They go clap for that one, dude. That, that you know, Dirty Ways, Dirty Ways. You know, Ray. Ray just said something while the track was playing, and, and it's so it's so true. You know, we all go out when we're single 
to, to you know, we want we want to find that, you know, we're looking for dirty, you know, sometimes. But when we get dirty, we got just what we asked for. We got, yeah. <laughs> you know. So it means two things. It's, 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 yeah, it's, at it's, first it's, it's positive, and then later on, like, hold up. <laughs> yeah. I mean, hey. You got some dirty ways now. Yeah, you got too many damn dirty ways. Yeah. Uh, okay. You know. And what? If you look in most cases, people se- get what you ask for. You get what you ask for. And sometimes the sexiest angel is the dirtiest at home. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And like, But what I'm saying is, like, clearly, I don't mean dirty in the bed. I mean, the whole damn place is a wreck. Yeah. <laughs> she don't clean a damn thing. She needs a cleaning woman or something. It's, yeah, oh, it's, it's that whole thing. You, <laughs> you know, when whenever you're, like, at the beginning of this song, when it talks about three in the morning, another call without a warning, it's okay. You're, t- you're accepting it because it's fitting your needs. Right. But when that person turns it around and starts screwing you over, it no longer fits your needs. So now dirty ways become something that is totally different. Yeah. You know? And then you got to you gotta stew in that for a little while. You got to swim out of that one. Yeah. You know? So stop being dirty. <laughs> stop being dirty. I love it. That's your next, hey, that next album, you need to do a spin off it. Stop being dirty. Stop being dirty. Yep. And go clean the kitchen. <laughs> I'll help. I'll even help you. I'll help you clean the kitchen. Yeah. You squirt and, and I'll 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 take the rag and I'll clean. I'll I'll I will actually no, we'll motivate each other. That one. <laughs> but no uh, <laughs> No I'm I, <laughs> we're just being goofy now. But like seriously, you know, it's a motivational thing back and forth. You have to keep motivating each other, you know, and and that's the thing. Even if it's whatever you're listening to, if you know that you had a good week that week, you might want to continue playing that album. You know, I just I just feel your album is one of those albums. Well, thank you, man. I, and I feel that too. Like there are days when I find a new artist that makes me feel that way, like you're talking about. I want people to hear it. Like if the next twenty people I talk to are are gonna hear who I just heard that made me feel good. Made right. me smile for a second, you right. know. Right. Something like that—that's what we all should do. Something that makes you feel good, we should pass it on. Yeah. You know. Yeah. That's that's yeah. how it works. Went to the went to the store. I like these flowers. I bought these flowers. <laughs> Want a flower? <laughs> yeah. I mean, <laughs> man, the make flowers made me feel good, so I, I brought them home. What happened the next day? You saw the flowers. You know, we can only started great, uh, better. We can only (laughs) pass on what what works for us, right? I mean, that's it. You can only say like, did well. If you're feeling bad, this works for me. If I listen to this artist, right? Or if I go to go buy flowers, whatever it may be, get a good burger, right? Doesn't matter. That's what works for me, and it may work for somebody else. You know. You, You brought up another interesting point that I, I, I'm you know artist you know why do people hang things on the wall because it makes you feel how okay if you've got something hanging on the wall that makes you feel bad take it down get it out of your house okay literally yeah. okay I mean prints why do people like prints I don't I don't think many people could say oh I can't stand that print song Okay. Oh yeah. <laughs> Clearly, there was something going on with Prince's frequencies. Okay. Do you, I, I mean, I, I think Prince has got more symbols with him than the symbols that he changes his name to. At the time. <laughs> but literally, I mean, but it's true. You know, you're you right. Know. Certain artists, and if you if you follow their discography, you're gonna you're gonna feel that frequency through a lot of their music. No matter how the styles change, you're gonna still feel their their personal vibe through it all. Okay. You know, I think. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I, I mean, let's talk about some of the other people on the album, too. Um, Steve Adams, Tim Corville, both of them on percussion and drums. I mean, right. if you don't know who Steve Adams is, you should. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. I mean, Cheers I just, to that. Yeah, I mean, I, you just should. Tim Corville, you, you may, I mean, I know he went to Nashville. Yeah, right, Tim's done a lot of session work. A year He's, ago? He's played with me for years. I've been knowing Tim since I was probably 12 years old. Man. Right. Great, incredible drummer. Yeah. Great guy. If you, the lead vocals, Ray Wood. Yeah, that would be me. I'm sorry. 
Uh, um, you know, bass Tony Ardwan. 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 Yeah, yeah. Okay. I always say Ardwan. Ardwan. Okay. I don't know why. Um, but really, I mean, oh, great people, great, great guys, great people, very creative. Yeah. Within the realm of what was already there, they, they, every single person that worked on it made each song better. It would not have been the same song without their their role in the song. So that's things work out like they should. Well, I have to say this because, okay, today's four twenty, and the name of your album is Raised Joint. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh -oh. I, I, I mean, it's kind of a coincidence, right? It's kind of interesting when you think about that. You know, that goes back to uh, that Raised Joint, that all these uh, old movies. Oh man, yeah, where that, they were going down to the joint. And that old building is on the ridge, and a buddy of mine doctored it up. Uh -huh. I just think it's a great building for y'all. Well, I mean, that's the name of the album, too, Ray's Joint. And there is a CD release party scheduled for May 14th. At the Grouse Room, yeah. Okay. And we should going to have a, a an artist to perform with us. That's going to be announced a little later, closer to the show. Um, okay. And then after that, we should be launching a new website. Uh, we're on all the different iTunes, anywhere you can buy electronic music, we're on it. Uh, have a website, www.raywoods-music.com. All the songs are there. You can buy the songs there. And we're going to have merchandise up on there, too. So hopefully things start moving a little forward. My whole, my whole plan is to change the frequency on the, or start a brand new frequency with the CD release form. Right. And that it permeates through everything else we do after that. Okay. You know, so hopefully, so come out May 14th at the Grouse Room. Would love the support. And uh, what time do you know? It, it's going to be probably going to start the event about eight. And times of bands are going to be, you know, ever changing until we really lock that in, which could be just, you know, that night. If somebody plays on it, it's always changing. I, I'm hoping to be on stage by at least nine thirty ten if we have an opening at at eight. So, and may even have somebody after the play, you know, to continue the whole thing. Somebody local, anybody we use that would be could be able to do a little bit of a original stuff, even a few covers. I may do a few covers. I may do a, a few tunes off my album I did years ago. So, yeah, I just think it's going to be a great night. I really do. Cool. New frequencies. Yeah, man. I mean. You know, that's what, that's what I think we should be focusing on, for sure. You know, it'd be good for our area. And, and <laughs> I'm sure I speak for everybody who you've been, you've been involved with. We do appreciate the, the support from your end, the things you're doing. And it's been great. And Man, I, I get a lot and, of feedback and, and, from other people about yeah. what you're doing. Well, I, I have to tell you, you know, I, I, I normally don't say anything about that. But y'all have just been just as more positive, just as positive to me as I have to y'all. I mean, literally. I mean, feeding each other's fire. You know, so that's good. Thing. The, the one thing I, I, I do believe about this area is, you know, because there, 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 you know, there's a lot of people trying to do. There, there's a lot of people that weren't helping. Now they are. That should have been helping before me. That's why I did it. It's so it's because that when people say. Oh, I didn't realize I could help that way. Well, maybe you never checked, or maybe you never checked. Yeah, tried. I mean, and, and that's kind of the thing, you know. What, you, you know, all I did was change my frequency, and all of a sudden, one day I said, "You know what?" I mean, that's true. I mean, I, I would go to shows. I would have a camera. I just had a camera. It was just, I'm just a chunky dude in the cam with a camera and a hat and a hat that you know. I'm not any different than anybody else. Yeah. You know, I do have, I, 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 but the only different, I, the only thing different about me is like literally I do sit there and I will dissect anything. Mm -hmm. Okay. I've been doing it since I was a young child. So like literally I remember back in the day when VCRs were $400 back in a long time ago, I took my parents apart when they would go to sleep <laughs> and saw how it worked. <laughs> so like literally, I mean that's what I did when I was a kid. I was bored, 
And I, I was like, why did this thing cost four hundred dollars? That's what I, I couldn't understand that. Yeah, so I would take it apart. That's how I learned how to build websites. I, I just I took Same what process. I saw and I, I I took the BS and I said, <laughs> no, this is BS. And I think musicians do that very well. They know who when, when somebody's shooting them the BS. Probably quicker than most. And I, <laughs> I think I have figured out why. Yeah. Because y'all are constantly around frequencies, making you consistently. You know, change. I can if it's somebody true. walks in a place where I play, I can tell you like, uh, that's yeah, this or that's, and I'm not reading minds. You're right, I'm reading frequencies to where like, man, I, that that person just makes me feel good when I'm around them. Or, or this person, man, I'm always end up down when I leave that person. It's because of that. It's because of frequency of what they're putting off their energy. Now, whoever has a stronger energy is going to dominate that situation. But you gravitate towards people that make you feel good. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I mean, yeah, you know, I'll go to places all the time and, and, and somebody, you know, I, I like hanging out with older people, like elderly people. I love hanging out with older people because they have, their stories are so cool and they have so, they, they're like kids again to me, you know, when they start talking about their stories. And to me, that's awesome. Oh, so I'll terrible. sit there and listen to these stories for hours, and I'm like, "Man, we should like play the piano." And they look, "Okay, let's do it." They don't question anything; they just do it. Little kids, same way. Okay, let's just do it. They don't really know how to do it; they just do it. it sounds completely horrible, but they're doing something. You, you, for some reason, that, that that fall in between. You know, where did that go? Yeah. Taking everybody's baggage on and you right. know, our, our court isn't that big. Once you fill it up with negative crap, you can be carrying around negative crap. So yeah. if you're not, you, you either help and push my trailer or you dead weight and making it harder for me to get through this. Life is so hard already. We make it hard on ourselves. But when we add other people's baggage, right. we're stuck in the mud. Well, you can only carry so much too. Yes. So... You know, some some people out out there. I've got to I've got to carry everybody's baggage. No, you, you you probably just need to go sit down. You are carrying with it, a piece but you don't have to. <laughs> and write a blues song because that's the, probably the best time to do that. You know, carry it, everybody. <laughs> you know, I'm carrying your blues. I'm gonna go write a song. <laughs> your blues bucket. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and that's the, I think that's the difference between music because musicians are, are to, in my opinion, y'all are a completely different species of person. In my opinion, literally. I mean, because y'all are constantly listening. Y'all really are. I mean, you, you're you using the functions of the brain that not many people use. Right. So, I mean, it's true. Like, when you can hear a note and know exactly, oh, it's D, it's G minor, you know, it's D. I mean, people don't do that. You know, they're worried about what kind of fork do I need? <laughs> really? I mean, it's true. That you, it's just proof behind it. Absolutely, man. No, I mean, no, people, they don't even care if it, you have, what kind of fork do you have? That's all I care about. <laughs> yeah, we have some unique musicians in the world, too. Some right? people don't even need a fork. Yeah. <laughs> just grab it. Out for a burger. Yeah. But tell me something. Slow moving train. Tell me uh, about that chart. I, I could tell you 10 different things I feel about that. I, I think it's about the the path. It's based in passion. Okay. Like the, sim, the simplicity of passion. Like the opening line is, I touch your cheek. You know, that's a show of love or whatever. And although this one, just like Dirty Ways, could be taken in a sexual way. Okay. It's more about overall passion and that, that slow grind. What is more passionate and more driven than a slow moving train? You know what I mean? Like it's, it's that fire that you have inside, which is sexual also, but it, it's more about in general of how, how, how deep, deeply and how, how passionate you can be about someone or something. So, right. and, and being, like the in, in the 
pre-chorus where, where it says all those, uh, you know, kiss you like I mean it, all those things is like, like don't waste them all. Like, be passionate all the time. Be, if, if it's, it doesn't, if it's your job, is the person you really care about, or if it's something you want to be, the passion should be the same. And this song is the, the way it came out. It, it is sexual. It's, it's about that passionate relationship. If you have that fire in a relationship, then if you put that in something else in your life, then you win. Like you win the game, game over, you win. So that's what this is about, that, that persistence of whatever it is, if it's love, if it's whatever, it's that persistence behind it that makes it work. Well, with that being said, here's Slow Moving Train by Ray Wood. And we're back with Ray Wood. Hey. Let's just do it. <laughs> I, I, I think we need to do that after every song. I, 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 I'm the guy in the live music show. If no one claps, I kind of collapse. So like that's why we do that. Yeah. Like, nobody, nobody, nobody ever catches that. But I think it's funny too. But, but no, man, that's good. Thank you. You know, I mean, everything is. You kind of, you know, it kind of reminds me of, of a lot of different things. You know, uh, the album period. It, 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 it's. You know, 13 tracks, you know. A bit much, but. <laughs> no, I, I don't think it's a bit much at all. I, I, I think, I think, you know, I think that's good. 13 is my, well, a lot of, it's actually, a, to me, it's a good number. But uh, I, don't, I don't get into the superstitious thing with the yeah. numbers, you know. So, uh, I mean, I don't know, man, I, I'm. We've talked about a lot of stuff. Absolutely. You know, they say I talk too much sometimes. Join the club. You know, I'm a special member of that club. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, it's a perfect time for it. You know, that's the way I look at it. You know, I don't. I think if you if if you have a lot to talk about, you'll feel better the next day. Absolutely. So, I just so happen to have a lot to talk about every day. <laughs> Me too. So. As my friends will tell you. <laughs> hey, um, one of the things I didn't get to see was, you know, uh, they, they we're goofing off while these songs are playing. You know, we're kind of talking about the songs and like out of nowhere, Ray's like, "Do you have a bathroom?" <laughs> and like, I'm like, "Well, yeah." And he's like, "I'm because I, I could tell." You know, I didn't know if he was getting passionate about what he was talking about or if he just needed to go to the bathroom. But out of nowhere, like after the song, like, I gotta go to the bathroom. It was, whole, it was pretty funny. I got to share that because, it, dude, it, I was cracking up. And then I run all the way down the hall to find out. Yeah, he's like, the he, other way. Then he comes back and sits on the side. I'm like, it's right outside the door. <laughs> so let me ask you this. In how many albums have you worked on in the last 30 years? Oh, man, let's see. Ten, ten, quality because I'm not. And when I, when I mean quality, someone who at least saw it through to to finishing and printing. Right. Otherwise, it would be countless numbers. Uh, most was uh, writing stuff, not necessarily hands on in the studio, singing or writing, singing backup tracks, but writing or people would use my songs. Uh, it's, it feels like home when you're there. Any musician will tell you that. If you're creative at all, you you don't want to leave. You, you get there and you don't want to leave. Like, you, you know, 12 hours to a musician in a studio being creative feels like one hour. No, it does. I mean, we've been here for a while. I mean, we've been here for an hour and 19 minutes. Yeah. So literally, it doesn't feel like that to me. No, I mean, and that's in the studio when you you get that the creative juices flowing, or you, things are going right, or even when things are going bad. To tell you the truth, it's it's a place where you can change it, or you can create it, or you can uh, I don't know, just explore things. And I need to do more of it now, but I need to, you know, obviously my all my attention is to this album. And but in the future, I plan on doing a lot more. I mean, we're constantly writing. I write. Tim, Tim writes. 
we're trying to get other artists. We have a ton of songs that we write that I will never that I will never do. It wouldn't fit me at all. So looking for people who are interested in doing that, you know, trying to find avenues of where they are, you know. You never know where you're going to hear a great singer. I've been surprised my whole life. You walk into a place and you're like, wow. In fact, you, Kevin. Kevin got up one night with me on stage <laughs> and sang, and I just looked at him. I'm like, wow, man, that was great. So you don't know where you're going to find it, you know. Well, they, they, they don't sing Tom Jones anymore. No. Well, maybe they need to start. Well, she's all you got. To... <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm a big, I, I sing a lot of Tom Jones and Tom Tony Bennett and stuff, like, you know, goofing off here and there, but. There's so many layers to music. Like, it's not just the style. It's, the, like you said, the frequency, the vibe, the emotion, the lyrics. There's so many levels that you can connect to on that song. Like, if someone doesn't like rap, well, they don't like a, the beat in a rap song. Well, they, you can't just turn away. Because sometimes there's some redeeming qualities in the lyrics, maybe. Or there's something that I've had, I've had that happen to me. With The reason I use that is be, with rap where I hate the beat and then I stop and listen to the lyrics and then next thing you know I love the song because it, it every song has so many layers that if you peel a few back every every once in a while right it's so like remember when you used to buy an album a CD I used to buy album. I used to buy albums but CDs you would like I remember song CDs on. in the cardboard box with the extra tower on top of it that you had no idea why they did that I, uh, but you'd like one song on the album. You bought it for one song, but you would listen to the whole thing. You didn't like it all. And then after about three passes, all of a sudden now you like three or four. And because you start peeling back those layers and, and hearing more of what the person's saying or what the person's feeling or what they're trying to, to get across to you. So I give all music a chance, you know, as far as for that. But uh, the stuff that we're writing right now, going back to that, it's not something I would want to sing or perform. Well, I gotta hear. I want to hear who Ray Woods' motivational rapper is. I want to hear this. My favorite rapper? Oh, we have to be Tupac. Really? Oh yeah, dude. He's a, he's a poet. If you read his lyrics, take take whatever you think about him out of the picture, because it really doesn't matter when the words are on the page, right? It's you and the page. It's you and the words. Yeah. His it's. It's just amazing. He paints pictures. A great songwriter paints a picture so you can see the movie. That's what he would do. And that's where I started listening to rap. Other than, I mean, the old school rap I would listen to, but that was kind of bubblegumish to a certain degree. You like know who? I mean? Who? I got to hear that. Because uh, to me, too I don't, don't want to call, okay. um, and I don't mean like Run DMC and all okay. that, because... Talking about the, the the pop ones, even Ham, MC Hammer. That's that's to me that's yeah. creating something in in for different purposes. I think they knew what they were doing. They they crafted songs that would sell. Yeah. Or Vanilla Ice or something like that. I'm not talking about like Run DMC, Grandmaster Flash, all those things. That's I was already listening to that. To me, they 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 were their own. <laughs> they they were the trend. The, those guys were. I mean, you know, Grandmaster Flash. Is like Dougie Fresh. Yeah, th those guys were trendsetters for 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 their own style, and I think their style was so strong because they were passionate. Because not many people were wanting to hear what they had to say, so they created their own community. And and and, and you know today where it's gone is completely different. Well, I mean, I I kind of feel that way about two part two, like. He's, he's traveled his own road, like, so I can't judge that. All I can do is understand that, what it makes me feel like, and, and I see the poetry in his lyrics, and the stories, because they're so vivid to know, and you know he actually lived those moments, then he's not he's not telling you something so you buy his record. He's, give, he's giving you a piece of him, and that's invaluable. You, you, you can't pay for that. Because I will never live that life, but now I got insight into that because I I can, you know, I can right. visualize what he's saying. Well, he was very good at the way that an actor uh, goes over a scene and becomes that person. 
he was very good at that. His his lyrics were brilliant. That that's what he was good at doing. Um, you know, because and, and I have to say that you know if you like Tupac, then you should you should like Shock G because Shock G mm -hmm. was the biggest part in helping Tupac even get behind. Oh, really? The mic. Yes. And do you do you know who Shock no, G? Is? Shock G is is actually the creative mind behind the digital underground. Oh, Humpty Dance. But Humpty Humpty Hump is Shock G. So when you listen to the Digital Underground album, you hear two voices. You hear Humpty Hump and you hear Shock G, but Shock G was also a producer. And he he you in an arrangement. I mean, he's amazing. It's amazing how many people behind the Certainly. scenes are are such a huge part of what you will be here at the end of the day. You well, know, it's, to, if I could interview Shock G, we'd be here for five days. Because <laughs> like, I mean, between him and what you know, there's another guy. Back in the day, he used to he used to do this song called "The Rhythm." His name's Kwame. He had a, um, you know, his hair was real flat in the front. And he had this huge like, he had like wave in the front. Got real popular, but behind this album called "The Rhythm," in like nineteen, I think it, I think it was something like nineteen eighty eight or like early ninety one. Or it was around that time, but. Um, Probably around, you know who Big Daddy Kane is? Yes. Okay, yeah. he was around that area. That area, yeah. Yeah. And maybe Kwame yeah. stopped completely. It became the producer for probably half of the people you see today. Really famous people. Like, I know, I, I, I was very big into that scene. I even got mm -hmm. invited one time to go to, to Dana. Dana Dane had a birthday party. You know who Dana Dane is? Dana Dane, yes. With Slick Ray. Yeah. Dana Dane. Dana Dane was a guy who Slick Rick had a kind of a European, you know, drag to his to his rap. Uh -huh. So like Dana Dane did the same thing, but he was Dana Dane with fame, and he did a song called Cinderella instead of Cinderella, and he had ballet shoes instead of. <laughs> <laughs> it was I, I, to be invited to Dana Dane's birthday party. When I was nineteen, that was one. Of, that was cool. That was a big deal. So, yeah, y'all, y'all just have no idea how far I go back with this too. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you know, I just, I just came back to it. I got married, stopped doing it, and it got, you know, it got came right back around. <laughs> yeah, it always does, man. <laughs> so, literally, you know, I, I, um, who are some other people that you listen to on a regular basis? That you find, that you, uh, you know, find interesting. I find, uh, uh, like, I find Gavin DeGraw, Jason Mraz is really okay. interesting to me. Um, man, I, I'm, it's so diverse. And Johnny Lane, I really, really like Johnny Lane. Um, R and B, there's so many. I, I'm a huge R and B fan. But like, I tend to, kind to of gravitate. Like Johnny Gill, Ralph Old Tresman. School. No. Like, yeah, Johnny Gill. I really like Johnny Gill. Like Charlie Wilson, mm -hmm. uh, Teddy Pendergrass. Yeah, that, uh, dude's, that dude's good. Sick. Good, yeah. Um, man, there's so many. I, I, You know what I love? I love the craft of singing so much that if it's done, like to hear something that is done well, I want to hear it. Yeah. And then to have your thoughts behind it. And tell me a story that's just icing on the cake to me. Yeah. You know? And randomly, like, you know, Pandora or whatever you put it on, you know, I may have a, a Charlie Wilson station and then a switch to Gavin DeGraw station or, you know, it's just, and I listen to it, country, a lot of country. I mean, I need to slow down. My ears are tied. Yeah, but you're <laughs> getting a, I mean, it's, you well, know. You see it come through on the album. That right. there's there's right. there's a little bit of everything on it. Well, I know you you have a lot of knowledge. That's why I'm asking you so many questions. You know, because pe people that listen the same way you do, they they want to learn. You know, um, I mean, and, and that's really why I ask so many questions. Because you know, it, it, one of these days you may have somebody come up to you and say, "Man, your insight on this it made me listen a little bit deeper." You know. Uh, somebody might come and say, man, I was listening to this and I, my life was horrible 
I stopped listening to it for 20 days. My life changed. So there must be something about this frequency thing I was yeah. talking about. You, know, yeah. you never know what, what you're going to say that might make somebody influence or change. You might say something, they might hate you guts. So but what I'm saying is, you know, give it a chance. Buy an album. Buy it. Buy it. Go to a show. You know, we have enough of them here. Yeah. You know, take, I mean, take the time to find out where they are. I mean, right. they we're not going knocking on doors. Right. You know what I mean? But the information's out there. And uh, if you want to hear good music, if you want to support good music, then take the time to, to find out where it's at. Yeah. Put in the effort. You know? Yeah. I mean, and you can go to Live and Local because I share a lot. Live and Local, local yes. Absolutely. I mean, I do. I, 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 a lot of people didn't know Wayne Toos was playing tomorrow night at nighttime. It started not. So what I'm saying, you know, it's true. Like tonight, uh, the other Ray, the Ray Pujo is doing his CD release party tonight at at uh, nighttime. So like, you know, Steve and them are probably playing right now at uh, Bob's. Yeah, yeah. You know, so there are things to do here. If you're listening and you're not from here, trust me. Every week, between I think six parishes. Yeah. From Lafayette and the surrounding parishes, there are a minimum of 35 things happening in this area every weekend. From 35 to 65 shows, events, and a lot of music shows in this area. So there's there's always something to do. People call me on my cell phone. What's going on? And I, I just tell them. You know? So I don't mind. I really don't. So... I, I want to say this. Um, I wish you success with this album, man. I do. Um, I, I think it's a great album. I think every track on it deserves something. It deserves somebody to actually sit back in their house for sure and just relax and, man, drink a really awesome glass of wine, even. You know? And, and, and if you do, tag Ray Wood in it, motivate him. <laughs> you know, because that's what motivates artists. I mean, I'm sitting back listening to Ray Wood. I love Louisiana Rain with a glass of red wine. You know, it does motivate us absolutely. That's what I'm saying. Like, don't be afraid to do listening. that. You know, it's better than hearing about the corn you had <laughs> on your foot. You know, that you posted that just everybody had to see. You know, they want to I mean, motivate people on Facebook because literally. It's true. It does. If I put the word stupid on Facebook and I've got 3,000 friends and 3,000 people just saw me write the word stupid, what do you think that does to me? I've got a 50-50 chance that I might just look stupid. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so <laughs> it's true. It works. It works. So put out something yeah, positive. Put out something positive. Like Absolutely. Ray Wood did. Because Ray Wood, Ray's joint is positive. And the Facebook page is just Ray Wood. So if you want to go find that too. Yeah. Again, everything's online. For well, and, and once again, well, we're going to have this. I'm going to have this entire, what we talked about, all the songs, all the tracks. We're going to put this on the on the radio, Louisiana.com. When you go in the front, you'll see it. They'll be able to listen to it again. You'll be able to actually click where to buy the album, where, the, where his Facebook page and you'll see it on our Facebook page as well. But if you don't have Facebook and you want to share it, go to RadioLouisiana.com and you can share it with them from a post on the blog and it will be there. I'm pretty sure the sun is out now. Yeah, the sun is out. After the rain, after the Louisiana yeah. rain. After the Louisiana rain, we started the Louisiana rain, we're going to end it with sunshine. Anything you could say about this one? This is a song about, you know, finding, sometimes you can find beauty and quirky and in, in the oddities in life, you know, uh, it's the small things that make people happy. And I think that's just what it's about, you know. I And you, the chorus is, you know, sunshine. It's, it's, about, it's about bringing a little sunshine into somebody's life somewhere or appreciating somebody else's sunshine that they're shining on you, you know. Vitamin D. <laughs> Vitamin D. It's a healing device, too. <laughs> buy Ray yeah. Wood. Buy Ray's joint. Absolutely. His Thanks for having me, Kevin. Absolutely, dude. Anytime. It was a pleasure. I, I, I'm very, very thankful that you are here, and I'm thankful 
that I was able to hear this entire album and talk about it. Here's Sunshine from Ray Wood.